This episode of the Slipcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company. They're fair trade certified USD organic, and integrity is their core value. They have high quality coffee beans directly from countries such as Colombia, Brazil, Honduras, Peru, and much, much more. Be sure to find out more about them and all the great coffees that they have over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? What is up, Discord? Uh, real quick, we are, we are actively shopping sponsors as we sort of move into the spring. So if anyone uh, would be interested in 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 partnering in advertising in sponsoring the uh the buckeye sloop cast uh just reach out to us no no not raid shadow legends that's that's not happening um, <laughs> uh we will not say anything uh believe you me i'd have some words with a with a someone at spreaker once because of a couple things they were adding to our auto ads but we'll, we'll leave that we'll leave that alone yep all right we get to talk some football today jared so let's oh God, let's go ahead and let's football. go ahead and jump right into it we've got barbecue back here you're all invited welcome to the sloopcast how are you doing today kyle i'm doing all right jared how are you doing today well as as you just said during the uh, mysterious YouTube only portion of the show, we have to talk about football today. Finally, football is here. Yeah. Temporarily. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Kyle, my man, po positive vibes. <laughs> We're going positive vibes. Well, if listen, Kyle, if you want to do the negative stuff, if you really want to do the negative stuff, we're recording the basketball episode after this. We're going positive vibes here. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of great things. We got, we got to see and hear um, some Buckeye football for a few days last week. And, of course, everybody is just absorbing every ounce that they can from these few practices before they go into their spring camp or spring break then come back for more spring practice. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they're already on, on their spring break now. Kids, be careful out there. If you saw what happened to uh, at least one Army uh, cadet football player. So y'all uh, y'all be careful out there. Um, the. Yeah, it's. Kyle, oh, by the way, Kyle, I almost forgot to mention. Um, this is our very first ever Sloop Camp episode. I hope everyone likes our new frame. Uh, sil the, the, the silly season is over. We're now in Sloop Camp season. Yeah. The sloop sleep over. <laughs> no. No, no, no. I mean it's it, it, it's Kyle, is Sloop Camp a sleepaway camp? Is this like a summer sleepaway camp? Well, it's not summer yet. Technically it's not even spring yet. I, I, I know, but I like the analogy of it. The analogy of it. What is sloop camp? Is this a day camp? Is this a sleepaway camp? What are we doing here? We're talking about we're talking about the spring camp for for our state here, and a lot of it, a lot of excitement. We're going to go over here. You got new players coming in. We got new numbers for existing players coming in. Um, previous players that really looking forward to seeing this year, and potentially an early look at to the starting five for the slobs are as well, maybe. Yeah, so that's, I'm, that, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm we got up here, Jared. I'm excited. Uh, yeah, so yeah. I now, uh, Kyle, should the item you put first in the notes? Should do we are we going to talk about that first or? Um, I I think so because it is very okay. it it is something very okay. serious. Yeah, and no, it's, like, it's something that it's something that Coach Day has been very vocal about and yes. has been very supportive of too. So I think, I think yeah, it's definitely something to talk about. I was about. just worried about like coming back from that tone. It was my, was my concern. 
Um, yeah, uh, Harry Miller, like, uh, we're not breaking news here by any means. This happened uh, many days ago by the time this actually gets released. Uh, but Harry Miller has medically retired from football uh, due to uh, severe depression. Um, I, I believe he... Uh, he, he called out he has a major de- he has major depressive disorder. Um, yeah, uh, Stewart says needs to stay out there. Let people know uh, they're worthy and there is help. Yeah, absolutely. Like and I, I was going to talk about it, like even if Kyle were, and I were taking this week off, we'd have talked about it next week. Like this is a thing that, you know, Kyle and I on this show have championed. Like I always say the. No matter how small my platform is, and it's it's small, like no matter how f- small this platform is, we're going to use it to normalize mental health. Um, like if you come in ju- and, and like if you join our Discord channel, we have a mental health section of the Discord channel. Now, it's still a Buckeye Discord channel, so the M's crossed out. So make no mistakes. <laughs> um, but yeah, like and it's a thing that we can and should talk about and. Yeah, uh, Harry Miller's strength, uh, Stuart, I'm quoting Stuart again, um, Harry Miller's strength will touch lives he'll never even know about. Absolutely. When, because, because like, here's the thing, and, and I know a lot of people who say stuff like this are trying to help. I, so I'm about to say, I'm about to give you guys, I'm just about to give you guys some examples of things not to say that people say um, to, to people with mental illness. Uh, and and I know I know it's coming from like a good place of wanting to fix things, but like here's here are things you will be told. Oh, well, have you tried exercising? The man's a fucking football player. <laughs> have you have you tried yoga? Oh, uh, have you have you tried seeing a a therapist? Like he, they're they're literally full time therapists in in the whack, um, like. Oh, well, have you, have you tried dedicating your life to something bigger than you? Oh, well, the man literally goes on missions uh, to Honduras. I, I forget. Uh, but, he, but he literally goes on missions to places. He's incredibly charitable. Um, I, he's a part of the Ohio State football program. Um, Nicaragua, Buckeye Esquire says. Um, point is, is that like all of those things that people will say to you, Oh, well, you know, have you tried exercising? Have you tried doing this? Have you tried getting some sun? Like, yeah, he has. And still, and still. And a lot of people are like, well, even he's even highly intelligent. Well, I I got bad news for some of you, but also good news for some of the other of you. Um, High intelligence uh, and depression, uh, there's there's comorbidity there. (laughs) Like, uh the the fact that he's incredibly intelligent uh only lends to his depression I hate I hate to break that to some of you um so the, I, I guess my point is is that um <laughs> ganglin says yeah it doesn't help <laughs> uh yeah so it's um i just i'm incredibly proud of him for doing what what he has done um i for for being public with it um, because like, it's, it's fantastic when musicians do it, right? Like musicians have been talking openly about depression and stuff for decades. Um, but like the football player is, is our, our cultures like man, manly man. It's not, it's not, it's not a guy, you know, strumming a guitar, singing poetry. Like the football player is like the man's man of manly men put up on a pedestal of what is supposed to be tough and strong and manly about the world. And okay, but they also struggle. And I I think it's incredibly important to get those types of messages from people like Harry Miller, like um, Kevin Love, who has spoken out about stuff like this in the past as well. Uh, So it's it's incredibly important to hear it from people who are considered exceptionally masculine because of their jobs. 
So uh, it just it's it's incredibly important, and I applaud. And by the way, not not just applaud Harry Miller for being public about it, but being like explicitly public about it. Like the man pulled yeah, no punches in his statement. Like he's not like, oh, I've been suffering from depression. He's like, I walked into Ryan Day's office and told him I was about to kill myself. Like that. That's mm -hmm. essentially what he says in the, in the letter. And and you know, while we're at it, like. And uh, uh, Kyle can talk about this, but like the fact that Ryan Day has set up resources both for the players and through his charitable work, charity work for for you know towards the goals of improving everyone's mental health. Yeah, and co and yeah, I mean, hats off to Coach Day there too. Uh, just like what Jared said, he in the in the um, letter that. Um, Harry Miller put in just said that coach day just immediately got in touch with, um, with two doctors to receive the support that he needed. And also for coach day to put him in a position to help out others in the program too. So it wasn't right. just coach day saying just not just doing the bare minimum, but he he's going the, what the proper way is to make sure that the person that's reaching out to him is getting the help that he needs and following suit with that. So, I mean, just, I mean, just hats off for coach day for doing the right thing. Yeah. And it, and it feels like anytime a, a head coach takes over at Ohio state or another sizable program, like they always adopt like their cause, right? This is the thing that I will, you know, give back to the community. You know, it's, it's, it's almost like a prerequisite, like a college coach, in some states it's football in some states it's basketball, but like the highest played, highest played, highest paid employee in any given state who is an employee of the state is oftentimes a football coach or a basketball. And like, so there, there's almost like a moral obligation, at least perceived to, you know, immediately give money back to the community and like no, no disrespect whatsoever to, to urban Meyer or a lot of the other coaches, but like, you know, they give money to cancer research, which is great which is absolutely great. No, not, not throwing any shade on anyone for doing that, but the Ryan day thing just feels so out of the box. And like one of the first things he does when he, so it, it's, it's just, it's one thing to sort of just be like, we're going to give our money to, to this and then, you know, do some commercials and whatnot. But Ryan day, like, this is really, really like his, his past yeah. with his dad is his past with his dad. It's well publicized. And it, 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 yeah, it's um like he takes over his head football coach. He immediately hires full-time therapists to be in the building at all times for anyone to, you know, and like at Ohio state, we have had a number of former players in, in the past 10 years kill themselves. And, you know, we all remember uh, Costa Cara, George, you know, who was a walk on on the team actively who, who took his own life. Um, I mean, it's it's it, it is what it is. And it the whether it be CTE or not. There, there's a lot of pressure and a lot of downfalls to being a football player and the mental health struggles that come along with it. And I could actually, I could do an entire episode about why that is even outside of CTE, but I'm, you know, we've, we're already, yep. we've already spent a lot of time on this. Uh, I have even, I could, like I said, I could, I could do an entire episode on this, but I think it's, it's probably time to actually talk about some football stuff. Yes. <clears throat> uh, numbers. New numbers coming up for Ohio State here. Uh, some, some I applaud you players. for just plowing forward and going from the absolute most serious thing we can be talking about to like the most least important thing, which is the numbers on a jersey. I applaud <laughs> you for just plowing right through it, Kyle. <laughs> uh, so yeah, a lot of lot of player, a lot of players changing their number here. Uh, um. Let's see here. Cameron Bob changes his number from eight to one. Emeka twelve to two. Mayan Williams to three. Ballard nine. Donovan Jackson 
that's odd. I've never really seen a like a offensive lineman wanting to change their number, but Donovan Jackson changing his to 72, Jacob James to 78, and um, G. Scott Jr. to 88. Kyle, does 88 feel a lot more like a tight end number to you? Yes, it does. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's, a, that's probably an indicator right there. If you want any other indicators, and, and not that any of the things I'm about to say are surprising by any means, but always look to see who's been given those single digit numbers. And Cameron Bob just changing single digit numbers too. <laughs> and like, and like obviously no offense to Cameron Bob, his injury issues are what they are. Like it's, but like, it's not like we associate him with a number. The man has not been on the field. Um, well, speaking, speaking of that, he's and, and like I, he's, I pray to God that that ends this year. Yeah. It's looking like he's ready to get back on the field here. There's been a lot of good reports of, of how well he's looking. Uh, so fingers crossed that he has a healthy season now and can really contribute, contribute to this team for the 2022 season. I mean, you know, like in, in a, in a wide receiver room that is jam packed, absolutely jam packed. People are still like talking like, well, you know, yeah. How uh, Stewart asks how many receivers are going to play. And here's the thing, like under the, uh, the former wide receiver coach who I will not name, he seemed to, prefer being buddy buddy with the wide receivers over actually making decisions. And therefore we got used to always having these really deep wide receiver rotations. Um, and then, but, but under Heartline, we've not seen those same deep wide receiver rotations. Well, and it's hard, hard to, when you had such great, absolutely. <laughs> uh, that was, that's where I was going with next. I was giving you an opportunity to say it like <laughs> that being said, when your number one and your number two are Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, that's that's a high mark to try and get to, right? Yeah, like potentially so, both of, both of them could be drafted num in the first round there. So, yeah, hard hard to to get them off of the field. But uh, Stewart asks Stewart asked here over under five and a half wide receiver rotation. It's a lot. Well, and it's a uh, lot, that's but I mean. That's also I mean, hard right to now, define. Right... Yeah, uh, because, because you got you got uh, JSN number one. He's never leaving the field. Like my my, my question, <laughs> my, my my biggest um, question in regards to JSN though is what position will he be playing? On on one hand, he's clearly the number one wide receiver on the team, but on the other hand, do you mess with a good thing and take him out of the slot? No, honestly, you mix it up. You really yeah, mix fair. it up. You, that's fair. You, you put him outside, you put him inside, you get him, you put him wherever he can get the bill, the, the ball, excuse me. But then you got, you got Fleming. Who's going to get a lot of, um, don't, play don't time. guys, Emeka, Emeka that I mentioned sleep. as well. And if Bob, and if Bob continues to, um, stay healthy, he's going to be in that rotation too. That's, that's four right there. And, and then can't forget about Harrison jr. As well. And then, Ballard. Maybe you start, maybe you see Ballard's uh, Ballard. getting a huge amount of hype right now. And again, like watch who they give the single digit numbers to mm -hmm. Jaden Ballard uh, moves up one from 10 to nine, but it's still that single digit number. Right. And like, yeah. we're also <laughs> Stuart just points out in the chat. We haven't even talked about any of the freshmen coming in who are all once again, insane. Mm hmm. Uh, so speaking of the freshmen here, uh, just kind of going down the list here, just some key key names here off the top of my head here. Uh, C.J. Hicks, number 11. Off the top of your head as you're clearly reading it. <laughs> Caleb Burton, number 12. Uh, let's see. Hyon Gray, 17. Uh, Jair Brown, 18. Uh, Gabe Powers, 36. Ty Stokes, 37. Hayden Curry, 92. George Fitzpatrick, 68. Bennett Christian, 85. Um, Ryan Turner, 24. 
so yeah, th those are a lot of the new numbers uh, for for some of the freshmen as well. Um, but yeah, like Burton is going to be great. Um, and then the and then the incoming safety from Oklahoma State, Tanner McAllister, fifteen. Yeah, it's it, it's 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 going to be real. It's going to be real, real deep. Uh, by the way, uh, Mayan Williams, uh, Chop, as we uh, affectionately refer to him. Uh, is been uh, moved up to a single digit number. He's now rolling with a three. Um, yeah, it's. But Kyle, the wide receivers, my man, the wide receivers, like Cameron Bob, like because because here's the thing we do sometimes as Buckeye fans, we tend to write people off. Kyle, how I think since season one, you you and I have talked about the uh, the shiny freshman, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone gets excited for like the shiny freshman or maybe in this case, the sophomores. Everyone's real excited about Jaden Ballard. Everyone's Absolutely. real excited about Marvin Harrison Jr. And I get it. We get excited over these young guys. But man, do not sleep on Bob. And for for Pete's sake, like don't don't sleep on Fleming. Like people are sleeping on Fleming hard. He comes in as the number one wide receiver in the country all the hype in the world. And then like, he's coming into his junior year and a lot of people are just like, well, where, where's, where's that bit? It's like, well, damn, give him a minute. <laughs> like he's had some insane guys over top of him. He, he came from a high school system that did not, you know, have him like ready to play wide receiver at an Ohio state level right away. Give the man a minute. Yeah. And by the way, he had a really good Rose Bowl, too. Can we point that out? Like, JSN and Marvin Harrison Jr. had such amazing Rose Bowls that it really sort of overshadowed the fact that, like, Julian Fleming had a really good game in his first start as well. Like, he didn't get three touchdowns. He didn't break a Rose Bowl record with the number of receptions he had. Uh, but he still had a really good game. Y'all yeah, got to chill out on Julian yeah, Fleming. Yeah, a Marvin bit. Harrison Jr. Yeah, he had six catches, half of those going for touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, then right, the, like um, JSN we, we are, broke all of the records in, in that game. Yeah. All right, Jared, we're over on time here. Let's let's go ahead and do a oh. uh, quick ad break here from our good friend over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Quick, quick correction. Gangland points out that Fleming started against Northwestern in, Northwestern in 2020. So I guess that was not his first start in the Rose Bowl. Thank you for the correction, Gangland. I'm just assuming you're right because I'm not about to Google it. Because instead of Googling it, I have to talk about the I have to talk about the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, the Iron Bean Coffee Company is a hand roasted micro batch coffee roaster. Um, Kyle already told you all the reasons why you should uh, buy from them as far as like being fair trade certified and organic and, and all of that stuff. And I've talked on here about the coffees. I don't know how many times I've talked about the coffees, uh, but there's new stuff. They got new stuff. For example, uh, there's the new arrival, the crazy monkey, which is a banana vanilla wafer, white chocolate bark. Uh, see, so you thought I was going coffee. So you're someone out there thought I was about to talk about coffee. Now I'm talking chocolate. Uh, but Jared, yeah, I really like bananas and I really, but I don't, I don't know if I want, I, I'm more of a, I don't know if I'm like a white chocolate guy. Like, I don't know. Like, do I, do I, I don't know if I really like white chocolate. Do they have like a regular, do they have a regular, do they, they do they have a bark that is not right. Is, is that what you're asking me right now? Um, I'm trying to pull up the page is I'm delaying. I'm purposely delaying because I was trying to find the page. There's the addicted. There's the peanut butter pretzel coffee bark. There you go. Uh, and that one's in a milk chocolate. So you got milk chocolate, you got peanut butter, you got pretzel. Um, and then you got some, cho uh, some well, obviously chocolate and, and then coffee in there as well. So that's another fantastic get. Um, and don't forget, by the way, they're also now selling soaps. Now selling soaps. Uh, there's the Cinnamon AF, 
which is cinnamon. Uh, the heavy cream, which is like a vanilla cream, and then the mocha choca. All of these are soaps. They sound so good, you might want to eat them, but you, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, and all of these things that aren't coffee can be found at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. That is ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roasters. Another right. hot topic here, Jared, that's been going around since this since the start of uh, spring camp here, and that's the notice of who's who's been playing a lot together, and with the slobs, we're we're starting to see maybe potentially the starting five for the slobs here. I'd say, oh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. It's too early. It's too <laughs> early. Uh, <laughs> Gangland asks, I still need to know if it burns the boys. I think he's, he's talking about the cinnamon soap. Uh, I, I have to imagine it's like the peppermint. I think I said this already. It's like the pe it's like peppermint soap, right? Like you, there's like a there's a burn in period. Pun intended. Uh, yeah. Um, of no. OK, so Kyle, how how confident would you say? That these are your these are your starting five. I, I'm going to ask you to justify it. And did you say who they are yet? No, I didn't. Oh, you should probably you should probably do that first. Now, then I need you to justify it. <laughs> so the observations from from a number of um, number of online services here that Jared and I look at and in other means too. Uh, it's looking like Paris Johnson, Matt Jones. Dwan Jones, Luke, and Donovan Jackson, potentially as your as your starting five. Yeah, it's like Dwan Jones at right tackle and Paris Johnson Jr. at left tackle. Like, if everyone stays healthy, like those are your starting tackles. Period. Done. Over. Yep. That's that's the end of that. That's the end of that conversation. It's over. Um. Donovan, Jack, they're, they're going to get Jackson on the field. They are super high on him right now. So uh, he's, he's, I think he's practically on the Paris Johnson Jr. track. If we see Paris Johnson Jr. go pro after this year, which is entirely possible, I think you then just see the, the right guard, the left tackle maneuver implemented once again, and he might very well be your starting. They're, they are very, very high on Jackson right now. Incredibly high mm -hmm. on Jackson right now. Yeah. I think there's, but Kyle, I still think that there's a number of guys who could end up at that left guard spot. And and I think, I think Matt Jones has the inside track. Uh, I just, I, I, I hesitate to say, I hesitate to say that like it's solidified though. Unless you want to tell me I'm wrong. I don't know. I mean, you got, you got, you got a guy like Matt Jones, Jared. He's been, been with the program for a number of years now. He's, He's the oldest, the most, um, uh, yeah, I guess the oldest one there, the one who's had the most, um, been on campus the longest of any of the other uh, offensive linemen there. You may just give him the, the, uh, the nod there because of the experience that he's had so far. So I, I, I think you would give Matt Jones the nod early on. Yeah, uh, I, I get it, but like Vamahi is right there as well. He's uh, just a year long, a year younger. Um, I get it. Um, I I just like Wh Whipler. I I think is a that's 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 decided, right? Luke yeah. Whipler, that's decided. Your tackles, that's decided. Um, Donovan Jackson, um, yeah, Stuart, he absolutely did. Donovan Jackson, I will start. He will start. Left guard, right guard, I don't know, but he's going to start. Right, According to reports, he's at right guard right now. Okay, he's going to start. Um, the left guard spot, I, I just think, like, and this is this is a good problem to have. I think Ohio State has a number of guys that could stick into that spot. Who 
Who's going to supplant any of the five named? I, I think none uh, for four of them. Um, and I think Matt, and again, I think Matt Jones has the inside track. Um, I just don't necessarily know. Right. Like when Fryer gets healthy, where's he at? Um, and, and like I said, Vamahi's right there as well. And I, I don't, and like, I'm not at practice every day, obviously, but I don't necessarily t- see a ton of difference between Jones and Vamahi. <laughs> Ben Chrisman is jacked. I mean, yeah, uh, a, a year, a year in the dojo will do that. Uh, I, I think we very, because there, there's going to be, this is going to be another huge year of, of turnover for Ohio state at the offensive line. Like they're both, I they think they're going to, I, if I were to venture a guess, they're going to lose both of their tackles again. Um, so there will be open spots. Um, that's, that's a foregone conclusion. Uh, hell mm-hmm. you, you could even theoretically see, because Luke Whipler will be eligible for the draft. No, no, he won't. He's he's only in his second year. Yep. Backing off that statement. <laughs> Give us names on spring transfers. You know we don't do that. We don't ever talk about transfers, except for yep. quarterbacks, because that's 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 just a given sometimes. Um, All right, Jared. Um, got a few questions here. We need a we need to answer from our fellow sloop cats here. Uh, Buckeye Esquire asks, for which position group is spring camp most important? I mean, um, to, to me, because to me, it's, it's important every year, especially when you have a lot of players leaving, it's, it's the offensive linemen. It, it, you, you have to find that right group, that right chemistry that just, that just works. So I, I think I think that's the the um, most important one, but if you want to be not as boring, I, uh, <laughs> I, well, no, but here's the thing, Kyle, I, I disagree. Probably with the line. I would say, I would say the linebackers, the linebackers or the safeties, like, like the middle and back down the center, like, cause you're going from a, a, a place last year where Ohio state was running. Like you're going to see like, I feel like the corners are probably going to do what the corners are going to do. And the defensive line are probably still like they're, they're implementing a Leo position. So it's sort of a hybrid linebacker defensive end. So that's a little bit different for them. Um, but, but the safeties and the linebackers, I feel like they're getting a full, Oh, see you Stuart. They're getting a full on system change. They're getting a full on system change. Like, yeah, they're yeah, going no, ab- potentially absolutely. three safeties, two linebackers. Now, that being said, is it that much different? Because, like, you know, you 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 rename the bullet to a bandit. <laughs> you go from bullet to bandit. Because, like, that's that's where your extra run support's going to come from, there, right? But we're talking about like a three safeties on the field situation. But again, like if one of those safeties is a cover safety, one of those safeties is a run support safety. And then one of those safeties is a like a deep cover zone safety. Is it actually Mm -hmm. all that much different from a position grouping standpoint? Now, as far as philosophy and scheme and all of that, it's going to it's going to be way different. Uh, we're, we're, we're done with the linebackers starting the play flat on their feet. Like that's, yeah. that's done and over with. This is going to be an attacking downhill style defense. Um, well, speaking of that, uh, Buckeye Zach also asked, what's the biggest key improvement on defense to look for in spring camp? And really that's just understanding how to understanding um, the playbook here. It's going to be, completely different than how vanilla <laughs> the defense looked last year. Yeah. Having, um, having players play hybrid positions. I've, I've seen a bunch of different comments from players just saying, yeah, we got players playing different positions. Not, not so much like, Oh, three tech to a one tech. It's, it's defensive ends playing linebackers, linebackers playing safeties, being able to really mix that up to really confuse offenses um, this upcoming season. This this scheme, the this 
this really will play into Ryan Day's desire to like have the best 11 on the field. Because you have that Leo position, which is part defensive end and part linebacker. You have the bandit position, which is part linebacker, part safety. Uh, you have one of the safety positions, which is, you know, kind of a cover safety. So he's part safety and part corner. So, yeah, it's, uh, it really lends, because you have all of these hybrid sort of positions, it really lends to being able to finagle things in such a way that you're going to get your best 11 on the field, mm -hmm. uh, which yeah. I think is what Ryan Day has always wanted. So, Ryan Day is going to get what he wants in that respect. But what we are going to look forward to here is having a defensive coordinator who's an experienced defensive coordinator who can call a defense, not just implement yep. a defense, not just put a defense into place, not just teach the players how to play defense, but also will be able to make adjustments like, well, he'll just be able to make adjustments, which is just not a thing we saw from the defense last year. Um, so it, I, we're we're looking we're looking at a lot of different stuff, and I think people are freaking out. Maybe not freaking out. I think people are putting a lot of emphasis on the positions, how they're some of the positions are getting like renamed and reworked, and and all of this stuff. And I I really don't think it's going to be a uh, hell. We we saw instances of uh, Zach Harrison dropping into coverage last year, which is what a Leo would do, like. It's not, I don't think it's going to be nearly as drastic a switch up as, as people are worried. It's going to be specifically from that point of view. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see a lot of positive changes. Uh, Buckeye Zach also says this Noel's going to put more focus back on the fundamentals, i.e. tackling in space. Um, uh, we're going back to rugby style tackling, which I've, I'm a fan of. Um, so it's less big hit and more get the guy on the ground. And it's a little bit, and it's also like just safer for the players. Again, you want to go back to talking about mental health and CT and, and stuff like that. The, the rugby style tackling is, is much head safer. So it's, it'll be beneficial from that standpoint too. So you're going to have less situations where the ball's going to get like maybe fumbled in such a way, just like a guy getting dislodged from the ball and you're going to have less big hits, but you're going to get a lot more sure tackling. Yeah. All right. Uh, a few more questions here. Uh, Nomad asks us how much of a battle should we expect quarterback to? None. None. I, yeah, and I mean, like your clear, your clear number one is Stroud. Your clear number two is McCord. And then your only other one is his incoming quarterback Brown as your third. So yeah, I, and, I, and this, I, this is going to be one of your least surprise. Like there's, there, there's no, there's going to be really no news from the quarterback position in terms of who's going to be playing and who QB one, two and three is. Yeah. And I think, I think the only real suspense here as far as quarterback is like the Stroud leave at the end of the year. Yes. Are you saying yes, he does, or yes, that's the only drama? That's the only drama. And honestly, okay. I don't even want to address that because the season hasn't even started yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're pretty much, uh, what, nine months away from any such conversations mm -hmm. being serious. So, yeah, yeah it's... And a, and a similar similar question Nomad asks um, um, previously what Zach asked, what's the biggest expected position battle this spring? Biggest expected position battle. Hmm. Uh, the the wide receivers. Honest? Like name th name three wide receivers who will be the three wide receivers. I dare you. Because like, four. <laughs> yeah. See, you don't get four. <laughs> so like, I feel like it's going to be JSN, Ameka Abuka, but and then like. How I want to stick like three guys in that third spot. Julian Fleming, yeah. Marvin Harrison Jr., Cameron Bob, Jaden Ballard. That's four guys I want to put in that slot. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, honestly, that, that to honestly, me is the most impossible. And again, that doesn't even 
that doesn't even bring up um what I what I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't even bring up Brown, Burton, Grays, or or Antwee, the freshman coming in. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I kind of I kind of stick with what Stewart mentioned. Um, well, he kind of mentioned, but I'll, I'll go with really safeties. We got a lot, and I mean a lot of safeties Not wrong. in the in this group here. Who are going to be your two, potentially three, depending on how the defense plays here? That's going to be rotating in here at safeties here. Currently, currently, as we're recording this, Jared, we have three, six, nine, eleven, thirteen safeties. Thirteen safeties on scholarship. Yeah, I'm I'm, lo- I'm looking at the I'm looking at the breakdown right now. Proctor, Hooker, McAllister, Hickman, Shaw, Ransom, Martinez, um, Williams, Dunn, um, Johnson, Turrentine, Stokes, and Styles. Pick three. <laughs> I mean, I like, can't. I can't. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm going to go with Proctor, McAllister, and Hickman. But they've been they've been talking up Williams something huge. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of early buzz around around Williams. Um, yeah. Ransom had really good games last year. Um, I think we've seen flashes out of Martinez at points, like. And I get that we also saw some bad stuff out of Martinez last year, but like he was a freshman w- playing in a bad defense. Get over it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's tough. I have to think some of these safeties maybe get, maybe moved to corner. Also, I think Possibly. some of these safeties are going to be what you call a cover safety, which I think maybe in the past you would have called the slot corner. Yeah. So it's, you know, when when you when you stop playing three corners and start playing three safeties, sometimes some of those corners have to become safeties. Yeah. All right. One last question we have here, Jared, from Buckeye Esquire. Is there a way to objectively tell if the Knowles system is clicking for the guys before the Notre Dame game? No. Objectively, no. We're not going to see any tells in the spring game. Yep. Um well, well, you'll get all sorts of amazing stories during camp, right? You're going to get all of these amazing stories about how everything's clicking and everyone's happy and everything's fine and everyone's excited and everyone's optimistic, but we get those every year. It's just, let's, that's what August is for, is for happy news. It's for hope and, and happy news and anticipation. And then after week one, we're all lighting Twitter on fire. And that's, that's just, that's what we do here. (laughs) Mm -hmm. All right, Jared, that's all the questions we have here. Uh, Anything else? Anything else you want to mention before we end today's episode? I do not think so, sir. Um, Just, you know, come join our discord server. We have a lot of fun. Um, Everyone's currently in the discord server has the opportunity to, um, Pick my next tattoo. That's a thing that's happening. Uh, the first round of voting will end on 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 Wednesday. So uh, you still have a couple days if you're listening to this on the day it comes out. Uh, so yeah, you you can you can vote on my next tattoo as a member of the Discord server. That's a thing you can do. So uh, that and we have an NCAA bracket and some other stuff you might be interested in. But also you get to help choose uh, what a uh, thing that will be permanently stained to my body. Because that's how we do March Madness in the in the Sloopcast Discord server. <laughs> Kyle, you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, how about how about our our own Columbus crew, Jared? They are, they are starting off really strong. Um, they have seven points in their first three games, nine goals, undefeated, has not lost yet this season. Really, really strong stuff. I'm really loving what what we're seeing offensively from this, uh, from this crew team this year. What do you think? 
I think it's uh, lots of cause for optimism right now. Scoring yeah. goals, which is was 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 the issue towards the end of last year. So if they can just sort of keep that up, um, because I think they started off pretty good. They started off pretty good like this last year as well. Um, so the the question becomes, can they keep it going? So we'll 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 see, we'll see. Yeah, that's no absolutely. Uh, the only other thing which we will cover in in tomorrow's episode was the Ohio State basketball team and them being a seventh seed in the South region. But you will have to listen to our uh, Sleuth Hoop episode that's coming out on Tuesday. There you go. So, uh, Kyle, with that being said, I'd like to um, tell you about tonight's ending music. The name of this band is called Causeways. Uh, they are from Columbus. Uh, so just that's cause like because, and then ways. So that's how you spell it. It's all one word. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is causeways. <laughs>